Hello everyone, this is Jean Michel for OSIA. In this tutorial, we are going to learn how we can make audio reactive visuals with OSIA score. What does that mean? It means visuals where uh, the shape of visuals depends on the sound, some effects, some, there is some variation which depends on some sound that is playing, and that's super useful, for instance, if you are doing VJing or things like that. So, how does that work? First, in score, we have to uh, have some visuals running, of course. So let's do this. First, let's add a device, a uh, window device on which we are going to render our stuff. And for this work, I will just directly switch to the uh, nodal view. Uh, we will just be running uh, non-stop the same uh, score. And uh, we won't have any timeline. We can add timeline li later, but for this topic, we don't need it. So first we have to choose some visual surrender. So I'll start with some uh, video. Uh, let's say something like that. And um, okay, I'll title score. Okay, this video plays on my viewport. And yeah. Now what we want to do is to say, okay, I want this video to be synchronized with some sounds though. Of course, this is a pre-recorded video. We can't really change it, but what we can do is apply effects on it that are going to give a movement depending on the sound. So um, let's find some cool sounds. So uh, I'll just go with some kick. So you can listen here. And yeah, let's take, I don't know, this one. Um, and yeah, I'll go to the right tempo directly. Otherwise we get some time stretch. And yeah, what we want to do is to have something that happens whenever there is a kick drop on our sound. Okay, so how do we do that? First, we have to find some nice effects to apply. So let's look for something interesting. Um, so some stuff won't, won't be super visible. Um, okay, this one, those stuff. <laughs> and so what we do is say, okay, the output of my video goes inside the input of my effect. Okay. And now uh, the effect is applied. Now what can we do? Uh, we can trigger uh, various things. Okay. And this control that looks like something that um, moves, you know? And now the question is how do we go from this sound to um, this parameter? So it's very simple. In score we have in audio, in proce our processes, we have this envelope process. So envelope, it computes basically what's the average volume of the sound. There is one input here. And so be careful, when I will connect this, um, the sound will stop playing. Um, we have to say, okay, I still want things to play. And now uh, this is uh, outputting something. And if I connect stuff, well, immediately things um, will start depending on the sound. Uh, now there is something which is that uh, the volume w w volume of sound it's something generally something so, some quite small, which we can check for instance with uh, value display here. Okay, so those are values. I don't know if you can see, but it's between zero and zero point one. And what if we want to have a bigger scale of values? for instance, to uh, go and change another parameter, then what we can do is add a mapping process which will multiply, for instance, the output of this by some other value. Let's say x times uh, 10 or 50 even. Now, if I take uh, this and display it, okay, you'll see that here, now I have something which is between zero and one more or less which can be more useful for a lot of process. So let's let's add another video effect. Um, let's see. Um, okay. Um, okay, kaleidoscope, that can be fun. 
Okay, uh, now what I can do is say no your the output and that will give us some nice controls and now I can say okay the output of my mapping it will go here okay so that's actually quite a lot uh, one thing is it seems to go of course below one so I, I can do um, 0 0.1 plus okay and here I have something that is going to change but actually for this control it was way too much uh, so let's not change this one maybe the angle okay this one is much more reasonable all right and th this will maybe work better with something like you know not just a drum but like um, some guitar or something I don't know um, do I have here uh, okay so let's do the same mm -hmm. so here my, my video was still playing here I have to say okay you're not playing anymore what we want is the output of the last one uh, here we want to play that way um, have some sound that will um, change things on your visual so uh, that would also work with say um, microphone input so for instance oh yeah that, that's something I can try that is uh, using my uh, microphone input to, um, to, 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 to change things so how will that work so I'll have to go connect it um, let's say where is my mic um, okay it's here and I will also put the input of the microphone here in score and um, okay now here I will just say this one two a a okay as you can see there is one, two, not much, uh, one, A, hey. O, oh. hey, 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 okay, this is a bit too much, but very easily I, I can use um, an external source to, uh, well, to do stuff, so of course if you have live musicians, that will also work, extra, extra. So that's it for um, our tutorial on directive visuals. Of course, that's not a tutorial on how to make nice visuals because I'm definitely not an expert in that. It's just how you can do it in score. If you have any questions, please come on uh, the forum or the chat of Ossia and we'll be super happy to help you uh, make the scores of your dream. Thanks, this was Jean-Michel.